good morning and welcome everybody to this uh, farewell assembly on the William Cowper campus. Uh, it's a time where we can honour the Year 12 boys and their contribution to the school over the years while recognising the diamond model and the connections and relationships established with other year groups. I'd also like to acknowledge the Year 12 girls who have studied here on this campus for the past two years. For those who weren't there, it was a very fitting farewell that they had on Brisbane Street yesterday. I'd like to invite Lachlan Bullock from Year 11 to give the acknowledgement of country. I would like to acknowledge the Camilleroy people, who are the traditional custodians of this land. I would also like to pay respect to the elders both past and present of the Camilleroy Nation and extend that respect to other Aboriginal people present. I'm just going to give a quick rundown of proceedings. I won't be coming up in between every single item. First, we will, firstly, we'll have some anecdotes and memories from Mr Starr and Mr Leach. Then there's a tribute video uh, that uh, Angus Gulliver, I believe, has put together. And thank you for your work in that. We'll then have the speech by the 2020 Boys Vice Captain Angus Cameron. And then Mrs Haywood, who's been the leader of wellbeing for the past two years, will uh, say a prayer. Finally, we'll have the announcement of the 2021 Boys Captains at the end of those proceedings. Uh, yesterday, the girls' captains were announced at the Farewell Assembly on the Brisbane Street campus. So without further ado, please welcome Mr Starr and Mr Leach. Uh, it is great honour and privilege that uh, myself and Mr Leach uh, stand before you today some of the mem uh, to share some of the memories and times spent with you group of men. Uh, when the boys asked us to be part of the ceremony, I don't really think they understood the depth of the situation in asking an ag teacher and a PE teacher to write a speech. <laughs> Something I know we haven't done since we were as young as these young gentlemen, so bear with us please. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't seem that long ago that the trash-talking kings rolled through the front gates at school here. They had an air of confidence about them. A number of them had older brothers at school, which set the stage for this group. However, it wasn't until our first away game, Year 7 Expedition, uh, did some of their true colours start to shine. Being my second time on this trip, I decided I, I, decided I had enough of listening to Scottish stories, so I immersed myself up the back with some of the boys. Uh, it was here I got to hear, for the very first time, the dulcet tones of a young Mitch Watts, <laughs> who knew the words and dance moves to every song and wasn't afraid to shout. <laughs> funnily, funnily, funnily enough, it wasn't the only thing he was comfortable letting out that <laughs> trip. <laughs> However, singing and dancing soon turned to complaining as the big fella became acquainted with Chase. <laughs> and the dancing certainly stopped. Uh, Chafe wasn't the only issue on the surfing camp. Archibald was in a constant state of uh, sunburn while there until he realised that it was just his colour all the time. Especially when you mentioned Bianca. <laughs> Uh, there are so many stories from the Year 8 camp, we can't mention them all. <laughs> like when Kobe Inglebrett fell out of the tree. Or when Big Staff took shortcuts to the toilet <laughs> and never actually left campsite at all. <laughs> it is shown to be very tough though, the Big Staff, when we got him to push a fishing hook through his finger because none of the teachers were keen to make a second trip to hospital while on that expedition. That's right, how could we forget? Now we all know that the Italian stallion giggles has a very short fuse. <laughs> and we saw that on this day as Gus stole his turn on the kayak. <laughs> this fuse was very quickly put out though as it, by a giant log about two inches under the water surface right where he decided to dive in while chasing Gus. <laughs> this is where we saw Langy really come into his own being the first aid officer while on camp. If he wasn't so random, he'd probably be running Bondo Rescue. <laughs> Being at random, I don't think I've met a more random character than Eddie Hagley. 
Yes, he is even more random than Wangy. <laughs> yep, this giggle incident was yet another of the many occasions that Cal Cutler just stood there and shook his head at Ben Antic, Ben's antics. And of all the trips to hospital, and I've taken a few students to hospital, uh, this was the quietest one without a doubt. It must be the longest time that Ben has been without speaking. <laughs> I did also save <laughs> Clarkie's life on that expedition. While on the 20k bushwalk, Nathan and I were having yet another one of his deep and meaningful. <laughs> When out of the corner of my eye, I saw him about to step on a six-foot red-bellied black snake. As I stopped him, an overpowering, deep, godlike voice that none of us have ever heard before and none have ever heard since, forcefully commanded, Don't move a muscle! <laughs> As David Bryce channeled his inner Steve Irwin, we all froze on the spot. As a puff of dust, where David left. <laughs> We're only standing moments ago. <laughs> that was not the only snake on the trip, as Jake from Snake CrossFit, who usually brings out the best in the boys, not only brought out, but brought up Jacob Kirby's breakfast. <laughs> All over the time of my youth, after a little early morning fitness session. This was also the same fitness session where Luke Ison slightly rolled his ankle, but somehow got referred pain to his neck where he screamed, I'm breaking my neck! <laughs> And he did not move for the next four hours. <laughs> Thankfully though, this injury is passed as he makes his way to be the next bait over. That reminds me, as a Premiership winning player and coach, some advice for Mr Chambers and his mighty chess team. His next year will probably be a rebuilding year after the loss of your fearless leader, Mitten. <laughs> the chess captain has failed to pass on any of his king-slaying tactics to the future generations, so it could be a rebuilding years, not year. Yes, Mr Chambers, you could ask Sam Braybrook and the rest of the Kirindai crew what rebuilding years are like. <laughs> the Kirindai Lions have been re rebuilding for longer than I've been playing rugby. <laughs> However, with the return of Kirindai's five, uh, five Braybrook sons, Braybrook, Gully, Cutmore, Clark and Grantley, they might have a chance of making the top four next year, as long as Braybrook doesn't get lifted in the line now, as he is terrified of heights, as I found out on the Year 10 expedition. Or, more recently, if he could pull himself away from the busy lockdown schedule in the dungeon. Oh, that should be right. <laughs> uh, surely if Gully, Gully's managing the team, they couldn't go wrong, unless he has one of his many, many uncoordinated moments and falls over his own feet. <laughs> Did you know that Gully's feet are less than half the size of Pat Ellison's and he still manages the trip over? <laughs> Speaking of uncoordinated, the Gunnedah Rats started strong with some of the best smack talkers in the group, with the likes of Shalert, Eli, Snook and Hamlin. Shalert though left us for bigger and better things. Snook saw the light and moved to Tamworth. Pretty sure that was only to be closer to a little sweetheart. <laughs> and Hamlin spends all his time cutting up animals at Taze while well, trying to avoid Scotty. <laughs> so that really only leaves one smack talking gunny rat left. Eli can and will talk smack. <laughs> yes, any story he tells, just make sure you take away the GST. He usually adds on there to make uh, a much bigger and better story. There were a few boys that left after primary school as one of the greenies thinking they were going to do something bigger and better. They soon realised their mistake. Yes, my mate Davo went up the hill to Taz, soon realised he needed more guidance in the agricultural industry. <laughs> So moved back for some quality year 9 and 10 adolescents. He still couldn't make the cut to join the sheep team though, but he might get there one day. You could probably ask your mate from, Black, from Blackville, the Blackville Bandit, Harold Braun, for some advice in farming. I've been asking for six years and it's non-stop info. <laughs> Cannot shut that bloke up. <laughs> and then there is the BMW driving pretty boy Cairn that went to Farrah, where I thrived for six years, and he couldn't handle it, so he came back. <laughs> only to be looked after by his old primary school buddy, Blair Logan. <laughs> Briefly going back to your eight camp, do you remember the time that Ben Cameron admitted, after much talk about being a John Deere legend, the only real John Deere he'd ever driven was his dad's ride on one mile. <laughs> Still the only John Deere he's ever been near to this day. <laughs> Where has Ben been lately? Has he left school? <laughs> No, 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 he's, he's still here, he's just been missing action for a little while since he got a new girlfriend. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. It was Snook that left. 
That's it. In year 10, the big fella tears in his eyes because he's leaving his beautiful mates forever. No, 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 no. Those were tears in his eyes for his mates. They were for a little sweetheart. <laughs> That's why he came back. We also lost Ethan McDonald to girls for a while there. Yeah, then he came back, then went missing again. Then he came back and went missing again. <laughs> At least we didn't lose little Sammy Grantley to the girls like we did his big brother. Oh, uh, hang on a minute. I saw him walking down the street one day with a girl in HR. <laughs> as soon as he saw me, he quickly made a sharp right into a dress shop with them. <laughs> he wasn't the only one we lost to the girls. Blair Logan didn't physically leave us, but spiritually left on numerous times in different quests for a variety of interests in love. It's great to see him back now much wiser from his experiences. <laughs> Speaking, on, uh, speaking of living on the edge, any love interests for Gus Cameron seem to be related to a little sweetheart. <laughs> Maybe it was his way of moving up in the world. He is, however, yet to notch up his first kiss, as the first attempt does not count if you miss one. <laughs> yes, he did only get voted in the school cap vice captain because we all love him. Not as bad as our school captain, though, who clearly got his position as captain due to his pale skin complexion and red hair resemblance to our fearless leader, Mr. Howie. <laughs> we could reminisce stories forever, but unfortunately must come to an end. Wait, wait, wait. There's one more moment in history that would have to be the greatest memory we have of all this year group, and we couldn't forget. <laughs> 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 you are <laughs> the greatest thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> Thank you. Year 12, this school and you are bound for the rest of your lives, linked by our past shared experiences, which will continue to reverberate into your future lives. Through your example, you remain with us in the younger students, who will in their turn, will endeavour to build upon the legacy you, have, you leave behind. Whilst our value words, integrity, selflessness, resilience and inclusiveness seem powerful in the abstract, they can be flat and generic on the page. The challenge is always to bring them to life and into the lives of those you lead. And you men have done that. You have not been perfect. You have made mistakes at times. There have been disagreements and indiscretions, and that's okay. What you have shown us, though, is how young men can learn from their errors with humility and good grace. And men, on a personal note, I respect this and I am proud of you. Your energy and enthusiasm has been a true joy and I won't forget that. I feel honoured and blessed to have spent so much of this journey with you. It's been a blast. And I will miss you. And so here we are at the end. Well, not quite. You've got some serious study to do, boys. <laughs> but men, I urge you to give it your all and do your best and make your parents, your school, and yourselves proud. Complete your story here in the best way possible by showing all what we have known for some time. You're not just Karossi men, you're great Karossi men. And finally, a few words of advice uh, for you as you go on your journey from a very wise man, myself. <laughs> Firstly, you don't have to have a dream. It's not necessary to have that long-term goal people are always talking about. You should put your head down and work hard on what is in front of you. Be passionate about short-term goals. You never know where you might end up. Be careful of the long-term dreams as usually the best things appear in your periphery. If you focus too far in front, you won't see the shiny thing out the corner of your eye. Oh, be like Mr. Star when he saved Nathan from the snake. <laughs> Second, don't seek to be happy. Happiness is fleeting. Instead, focus making someone else happy and you might get some of the side effects. Third, remember it's all luck. 
You're lucky to be here, you're lucky to be alive. Understanding that, you can't, can't really have, take credit for the success. You will humble you and make you a more compassionate person. Fourth, exercise. Play a sport, do yoga, pump iron, play rugby, run. Whatever it is, take care of your body, you're going to need it. Most of you are going to live for a very long time. And finally, don't be a stranger. Make sure you keep in touch as we will miss you. As you take the next chapter in your lives and go into universities, trades, gap years, girlfriends, careers, wives, children and parenthood, try to remember that it is at this place with these people around you that you have grown from children to men and you are all men that I'm proud of. You go now with great memories, you go with great friendships, you go with our blessings and you go with our love. And remember always, you'll be dearly missed. Today to address you with mixed emotions. The ending of what has been such an influential journey seems so surreal and fills me with disbelief, yet inspires me to reflect on the past six years. Today, my six, my, myself, today myself and 26 fellow graduates finish our journeys among this humble campus, and thus we gather today to celebrate our own achievements, a time to reflect on our own journey and what we have learnt along the way. What better place to start than the beginning? Six long years ago, year seven, there were 44 of us. Lifted by the spirit of the surrounding boys and teachers, we were merely encouraged to participate, try and enjoy ourselves as we settled into our new school. Many new faces, some of which reluctantly left the motherland of Corindai, some coming from properties to board, and others from Tumworth, collaborating to make up Year 7 of 2015. Quickly enough, we began, to, we began building friendships and began to discover the quirky and odd personas that made our year group iconic. Tom Ether liked to tell us all who his dad was, Hunty quickly showed us all how not to recover from a breakup. <laughs> and Harold, well, he didn't give much away. <laughs> the way in which the older years immediately welcomed us and wanted to get to know us was special. We were welcomed into this brotherhood and from that point onwards we grew and learned along the way, knowing we were part of something greater than ourselves. To pick just a couple of memories to reflect on was difficult, as there were so many rare moments shared among our six years. Rather, I thought I'd reflect on what we'd learned through with other people's doings. We learned quickly of Gally's inability to steal softball bases, Luke and Harry's reliance on technology to text their Year 7 dream girls, Dom Abbo's strange interpretation of racism, <laughs> and the terrifying uncertainty of Dryden's next action. We learned that Huey is quite possibly the most awkward but likeable man alive, that Geely has his own way of identifying submerged logs, and that Blair, he's always keen for more. <laughs> And we quickly learned that through the mentoring of older boys, those that had gone before us, and teachers, while we came as 44 individual students, we began to come together as one in a singular identity and form unity in our cohort, creating a band of brothers. Starting our journey as wide-eyed, excited, naive boys, we began to mature and all become men of substance, something in which is special to this campus, a process essential to be sustained. To the future of Cowper men, our brothers that sit in front of me today, it's time to hand the baton on. This campus has always been known for its humbling beginnings and rich culture rather than its elaborate facilities. A campus sculpted around its students to nurture and build them so that they graduate as men of substance. Men who show resilience, men who are selfless, men who uphold integrity and respect, and ultimately men who instill unity into their cohort and their surrounding peers. Men who appreciate diversity and embrace an individual's downfalls. These are the key values that have stood out to me among my six years of education at this very campus. Values that have been infused among students and demonstrated through teachers in order to create an ever so strong brotherhood, whereby friendships aren't limited by your year group, instead flourish throughout each. Such a culture was resurrected through the invaluable leadership of, of Mr Larkin and Mr Goldsworthy, two men in which sculpted the true values of what it means to be a Kappa man. I remember listening to Mr Larkin speak and say that in the early days, the beginnings, they used words when there was nothing else for the school to display. The building of values and traits within students was far more important than the buildings themselves, 
And this led to the creation of a lasting legacy, a lasting brotherhood that is still ever so strong today. In saying this, this campus has undergone various challenges in which students and staff have seen as an opportunity rather than a risk. While change is inevitable, such a culture is about to embark on its biggest challenge yet. But just like past years, by no means should this be seen as an ending of culture rather than an opportunity. While things will be vastly different next year due to the implementation of a new structure, use such change as an opportunity to strengthen the brotherhood, a chance to display it and entrench it in future generations of Kappa men. Adaptations are pivotal to the future of the brotherhood and is essential to keep such a brotherhood going. There comes a time to move beyond the symbol. Well, um, it comes a time to move beyond a symbol and instead focus on what it truly means. The Kappa culture and the brotherhood it possesses is worth so much more than just a symbol. While the Wyvern has had a precious part to play in Kappa's history and still is present in the centenary symbol, there comes a time to look past this and assess the values in which make up the pride of the Wyvern. The true test of a man is what he does when no one is watching, said John Wooden. The Kappa Brotherhood rests in each student's actions and how they uphold the key values within their actions and behaviours. Future Kappa men, it's essential to identify those values and thus foster them as essential values moving forward into the future of this culture. Aim to leave a legacy at this school. Don't be happy to settle for second best, but instead aim to continue to grow the Brotherhood and allow it to strengthen into the future. The book Legacy explores the New Zealand All Blacks Rugby Union side and outlines lessons in leadership and how this culminates to success. So many points from this book are relevant to this very campus and this very bunch of men sitting in front of me. It states how former All Black Ali Williams tries to ensure to leave the jersey in a better place. Whether out in the sports field, in the classroom or in the playground, aim to inspire and leave a legacy and ultimately leave this campus in this brotherhood in a better place. We as a cohort have aimed to do so and I hope that we could fulfil our aspirations and leave up in coming years with a strong foundation with room to add their own legacy. Upcoming men of Kappa don't settle for the ordinary, rather inspire and adapt to change so that this school can continue to graduate men of integrity, honesty, respect and selflessness. Our journey as a cohort could not merely be possible without teachers, who have all proven to be so much more than just teachers, but rather mentors in which have supported and led the way for our growth throughout our six years of schooling. To that, we say thank you. Your actions and leadership have truly shown us what it means to be men of substance. The endless banter and the extensive effort you have put in outside of the classroom is a testament to your commitment to us as students. Mrs Haywood, I thank you as our, our senior leader of wellbeing. While two years ago I didn't know who you were, the way you've involved yourself and, got, and gone to know us as a boys' cohort over the past two years has been treasured. By no means has our graduation year been ideal, Yet your enthusiasm and effort to make it as enjoyable as possible and the way in which you have represented us has been greatly appreciated by Year 12 and to that we say thank you. I thank Mr Trubaskis as a mentor for showing us the value of respect, generosity and kindness. I thank Glendon for the endless stories and life lessons. I thank Ms Bartlett for your patience and building my resilience towards sassy one-liners. And I thank Lange for always having some rare wisdom at the ready. While I've only mentioned a few, every single teacher that has had a role to play in our journey has had an impact. Without you, it could not have been possible, and we thank you for your contribution to us as students. With this, we thank Star and Leachy. You have not only been committed and patient teachers, but your mentoring outside of the classroom has been far more valuable, teaching us life lessons and shaping us into the men we are today. Thank you for pulling us into line when needed. And for always being there for a chat, in which generally they consist of expedition stories or contributing in roasting sessions. Thank you for the countless memories we've created and will cherish. Whether it was Leachy almost killing Snook and Luke with a hammer at Year 8 camp, or Starry catching Brave with Fletchy in the mirror in, on, un, in undies on a rugby trip, <laughs> or, com, or Starry accompanying various boys in sinking a boat with Salsi on Year 10 camp, or the infamous bus karaoke's, or just our countless hours of smack talk in general, whether it be on expeditions, rugby trips or just generally around the playground. I can't put into words the influence you two have had in our schooling journey. You truly are leaders in every way and have been role models, role models to many of us. So to that, we thank you. To the girls, we thank you for the past two years. While some things will never make sense, like why your bags get the priority of seating and how you still manage to get cold on 33 days, we have formed unity within two strong year groups and along the way we have made precious memories and friendships. To Matt, I couldn't have asked for a better bloke to lead us all around. In a year where so much trash is spoken, there is no better man to diffuse this and perhaps be the more mature one in situations. You're quite possibly one of the most humble, genuine blokes I've met. And it has been my pleasure to work alongside you in what's been such an uncertain year. And 
finally, I think 26 fellow CAF men in front of me. I couldn't have asked for a better bunch to complete my six years of schooling with. I consider all of you my brothers, and you've all contributed for the past six years, being some of the best of my life. Along the way, we have formed lifelong friendships and enjoyed some of the funniest, weirdest, and most rewarding memories together. And memories made will be reminisced for life. And it's times like these I will treasure the most. Whether it's Bryce ensuring we poor were saving us all from that snake, Luca somehow breaking his neck through knee pain, or Mitchell ensuring he will never sleep below me on a bunk bed again. Or maybe it's Cal's newfound love in the school in year 12. All the countless other rare moments we all experienced on expeditions. Although, boys, our part in this story is coming to an end. This will likely be the last time we all sit in a room together. As we complete our HSC, we will all go our separate ways on new journeys. You have all grown into men of substance, and it makes me proud to be a part of the graduating year 12 of 2020. We started at 44 and finished at 27. We have shared in each other's joys and sorrows. We have climbed the heights. We have reached the burning lights. We have become, and forever will be, the men of Cowper. Thank you. prayer together so please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, as year 12 comes to the end of their formal schooling, we give thanks to you God for all the teaching and learning that has taken place in our school both in and out of the classroom, for the talents and gifts that have been shared and the challenges that have been faced, for the burdens that have been lifted and the challenges that have been overcome for the respect and care that has been given to Year 12 over 13 years by their own peers, their teachers, and by all those who work in our school. We thank you for the many parents and carers who have supported these students through their 13 years of school and who will continue to do so as these students become independent. We give thanks for the friendships that have grown through fun and amazing times and also for those friendships that have been more challenging, but that have taught us more about ourselves. We thank you for the faith that has been lived in our daily struggles, for the hope that has lifted our hearts on the dark days, and for the love you offer in Jesus that has kept us going. We give thanks for the community that we are, and we ask you, Lord, bless these students as they sit their HSC exams. May your spirit inspire them with confidence and calmness. And for life after the HSC, we pray that you will bless the hands of these students as they go to work on the land, or in machinery, or in service and hospitality, or in nursing wards and other caring professions. Bless the feet of our students as they run forward into the future, eager to serve others to grab opportunities, to walk alongside those who struggle. Please also bless those of us who remain at home here, who will be missing them from school and from our homes as they move on to study or work in other places. Father, we thank you for each individual graduating here today. Please bless them one by one and fill them with the wisdom that comes from knowing how loved they are by you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Firstly, uh, Mrs Hayward, if you'd like to please come up again. Uh, on the behalf of all Year 12 and uh, the 2020 uh, student leaders, we'd like to say thank you for your amazing work. You've literally made so many memories with all of us and we, are, we will cherish these for the rest of our lives. So thank you and enjoy.
We will now have the announcement of the Year 12 Boys Leaders for 2021. As I mentioned earlier, the 2021 Girls Leaders were announced yesterday at the Farewell Assembly. I'm going to ask our two current Boys Captains to announce those now. All right, um, so the uh, school captain for 2021 is uh, Matthew Holmes. <laughs> the uh, 2021 vice captain will be Miles Davis. House Captain for Cuthbert House is Ned Chaffee. <laughs> the House Captain for Hamlin House will be Cooper Bedgewood. <laughs> House Cap Captain for Nichols House is Hamish McPherson. The House Captain for Sheen House will be Sean Lewis. The uh, SRC Leader will be Sathamath Balajuria. And the Boarding Prefects are Nick Morrison and Pat Bloomfield. These boys will form a great team with the girls who announced yesterday and look forward to their leadership in 2021. This nearly brings to an end our secondary farewell assembly on the William Cowper campus. To farewell the students, the final call of the roll will take place. As is tradition, could I request staff to form a line to send off the boys? Uh, could everyone else please stand as we do this? He watched both. Sam Braybrook.